In a quarter of a mile, keep right to continue towards Tunt Lane A355. parliamentary by-elections in England, people in Wakefield in West Yorkshire and Tiverton and Honiton in Devon will elect new MPs after recent resignations. And the last paper banknotes will become worthless in a hundred days. Fourteen billion pounds worth of the 20 and 50 pound notes are still in circulation. They have to be spent or deposited in the bank by the 30th of September. In the city, the FTSE 100 will reopen at 70.89 after closing down 62 points yesterday. And the pound buys $1.22 and €1.15. LBC weather, fine and dry at first for most areas. Showers and thunderstorms... In a quarter of a mile, at the Roundabout, take the first exit onto the M4 slip road to London, Heathrow Airport. I'm Simon Conway. I race for life for my mum, who was diagnosed with bowel cancer. I race for life for my best friend, who we lost too soon. I race for life for my dad, who's living with prostate cancer. I race for life for everyone facing cancer. Who will you race for life for? Raise money for life-saving cancer research. Go to raceforlife.org now and sign up to Race for Life events in London this summer. And together, we will beat cancer. In partnership with Tesco. In a quarter of a mile, merge onto M4. After seven Thursday, the 23rd of June, rail strikes day two. This, as it is being suggested, the rail chiefs are expecting more strikes in just two weeks' time. We'll give you full details on that story. Of course, covering the full news agenda, we go elsewhere in the world. The tragedy that's hit the Patika region of Afghanistan. <laughs> People feared killed, lift 1,500 possibly injured, the Taliban asking for help. Will you give you details of that? The return of polio, the virus spreads in Britain, starting in London for the first time in 40 years. Adam Finn is a professor and a member of the JCVI. Do you remember that? Speaking yesterday. I'm afraid there is reason to suggest it spread because this has been picked up now over a period of several months. The majority of people have been vaccinated, but nevertheless there are people who haven't been. Another day, another child abuse scandal. It would appear in this instance, though, failure to operate an orange action by police. Victims were failed by police in the Rotherham grooming scandal, but not one officer has lost their job. I'm LBC's Vicky Smith with the story. Plus, the exam board that, in the name of diversity, is ready to dump some of the greatest poets this country has ever known. I mentioned Wilfred Owen. Here's Philip Larkin. And to prove our almost instinct, almost true, what will survive of us is love.
Nick, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. The front doors to Waterloo Station under the marble entrance are padlocked at 7.06 on a Thursday morning. And those that get in through the other open entrances are greeted with a departures board on which many of the trains are highlighted by the words, please inquire. The bus stops peppered around the station have had people queuing since the early hours as commuters try to get into work. I've been speaking to some of them. Well, I have to go from Clapham to Tottenham today now. I'd love to get a bus. I got a bus Tuesday. Three hours it took me. Are you expecting the same amount of yes. time today? Yeah, maybe more because I think there's more cars going to be on the road today. Road works as well. Diversions. Three hours was quite good. I, um, no, I think last or the last strike, it took me four hours to get back from Tottenham. I could drive, but the congestion charge, £27 a day or something like that. I mean, it's affected work because of the amount of staff that have not, not been able to get in. So, apart from that, um, I think they're fighting for what they, what they deserve, to be honest. Well, I don't think it's worth doing the strikes because people need to get to work. I think they've got a point. I normally get a train to work and I walk to the station, get on the train, and it takes me about half an hour to 40 minutes. But now it's taking over an hour and also some of the bus routes on the way. In two miles, a junction 4B, exit towards M3, M23. You think, I don't know this route and it will take you a different way. A small race that the tube is running today, Nick, although there is still some disruption. Talks to avert the strikes continued yesterday, but the language seemed to get bitter. The RMT say the strike will continue until there's a deal that delivers job security and a pay rise. They laid the blame for the breakdown in talks on Transport Secretary Grant Shapps. Here's Eddie Dempsey from the union. We were handed a notice of compulsory redundancies. We came back here today seeking for that, for it to be removed. We have been told now by the highest people in their work realm, they don't have the authority to say that you can withdraw that letter. Transport Secretary said the claim was a total lie and he had nothing to do with it. Meanwhile, Network Rail says talks never really got started yesterday. They're going to continue today, but it's another painful commute for the public with no end to the disruption in sight. James Gerson reporting Network Rail is expecting a decision on new dates to be made, new dates for industrial action, soon after the round of strikes this week ends on Saturday. And it is reported in one newspaper this morning, the Daily Telegraph, Network Rail are working to an assumption that they can begin as early as July the 9th. This obviously starts to threaten summer holidays. And now, as if the situation couldn't get worse, ASLEP, I remind you, most of the drivers of ASLEP, they are now moving to a situation where they're getting ready to ballot their drivers. The ballot will take place at 11 major train companies. Let me quickly read them to you. Arriva Rail London, Chiltern Railways, Great Western, LNER, Northern Trains, South Eastern, Trans Pennine Express, and West Midlands Trains. Ballot closing on July 11. Strikes predicted, possibly, possibly, depending on the vote, two weeks after that. You could almost put a line through July, couldn't you? Anna Jane Hunter served as director of Network Rail as recently as 2020 and is now a partner at Winder Phillips Associates, a specialist consultancy in the rail uh, industry, and joins me now. Just before we get into your expertise... In a quarter of a mile, a junction 4B, exit towards M3, M23. ...typical day on a situation like that. Presumably, delegates arrive from both uh, groups at 8 or 9 in the morning and they go in a room with tea and biscuits and just talk. Is that what happens? Good morning to you. Morning. Um, yeah, so the, the, the talks involve a really small number of, of very senior um, people from that work. Really, have seen them. Um, my former boss. Exit at junction four B. Then keep right at the fork. Yeah, well, there you go. So yeah, that's. I'll give him your best. No, you can do. That small number of people will be. Yeah, literally trying to lock themselves in a room and, and hash this out. And the rest of the network rail management team, which is which is sizable as you'll know, are, are getting on with the job of trying to keep the railway running as much as possible. Keep right at the fork. Do you, how do you see pace, pace, peace breaking out, Anna Jane? I really don't know. I think it's, it's a shame that the, the side seems to be still quite far apart, but there's always a compromise to be found, and there is quite a lot of ground to be talked through here. It's not simply a case of a number in a pay deal, and there's a lot of modernisation, a lot of terms and conditions of work and practices to be discussed. Um, so hopefully somewhere in there lies the compromise that needs to be found and that will, will lead to a resolution. We have had a deal at Mersey Rail, 7.1%, I understand. What do we take from that? Reminding my listeners that the initial offer from the rail operating companies to the trade union has been, I understand, 3%. 
There is talk that the trade union wants something more in line with inflation is 9%. 7.1, might that be something that shows a little bit meaty as chance of a deal? So that's, I think this works both ways. It's helpful that there's another number in, you know, that, that, that's out there and, and clearly a much higher number. We, we do need to remember that the way the way the funding and the sort of the power works, um, you know, is slightly different in, in the Mersey Rail Mersey travel south. So they've been able to reach that deal. It's also a different union, it's GSSA rather than yes. you know, RMC in those discussions. So, yes. so it, it is different, but I think it could be helpful um, so long as that doesn't, you know, fan the flames in terms of entrenching the RMT further into the number they want. Hopefully that won't be the case. I don't know if you heard uh, my introduction. I talked about the fact that Network Rail is working to more strikes with um, with the RMT earlier in July and then possibly as less strikes. Would you be equally pessimistic that we could be looking at rail action of some sort or shape through the whole of next month? I think it's looking increasingly likely and listening to what, um, you know, the likes of, of Mick Lynch and Eddie Dempsey have said, it, it, you know, they, they look like they're heading that way and they, they rightly, as the process works, will give the two weeks In two miles, at junction three, take the A312 exit to Harrow, Hayes. Recruitment industry. You also serve as a managing director of the Confederation of British Industries, so you're a man who's used to negotiations. When you would appear, it would appear to be a stalemate of this magnitude. How do you break the deadlock? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Um, I think Anna Jane put her finger on it right now. To me, um, you know, I'm a member of the council at ACAS. I'm looking at this dispute and thinking there's a lot more than pay to it. There's a lot of change in the railway coming. Um, that is a challenge. We've got a lot of things on the to-do list, but actually it's also an opportunity because if you've got multiple variables, you can move them around a little bit. I'll give you a bit on that. Uh, we'll take a bit, bit on that. So I think as long as the negotiators are properly empowered by both sides, there, there's the potential to get a deal here if we can keep people at the table. And that's the most the most important thing right now is to, is to keep the RMT ultimately as left in due course and ne Network Rail and the train companies at the table because there is, there is a reason, um, I think there is a resolution here. It will just take hard work. It's interesting you reference ACAS, Neil. I remember when they've been involved in breaking many a deadlock. How is a strike referred to ACAS? Does one of the parties have to agree to it? Do both parties have to agree to it? What's the procedure? The two parties have to come to ACAS um, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of colleagues at ACAS, I know that when that moment is, re is asked for, ACAS are ready to respond. It is just about um, simply keeping people in the room, you know, to, to be slightly flippant, sometimes it's about not, not getting them any pizza until they make some progress. Uh, but the, that challenge of keeping people at the table is is the most important thing um i i know as anna uh, as anna just said the, the language hardened a little yesterday but i do think there's uh, that there's hope there's hope to find some resolution here so you're lastly you know, you're not as pessimistic about putting a line through the whole of july for industrial action i sense um i think sometimes unions uh need to uh, want a show of strength and this week is about the rmt showing strength and i think as will will want a show of strength as well but in reality, there's only so much disrupting the public you can do to keep uh, and keep support. Uh, and the, I think the RMT uh, will have that on their mind. I think after this round of strikes, we we should expect more uh, more talks. I think it's important though that the the negotiators on the company side are fully empowered as well. And you know, I have no insight into the relationship between them and the Department for Transport, but that seems to be a blocker right now as well. Enjoyed our time together. Thanks, Neil. Neil Carvey, Chief Executive of the Recruitment and Employment Confederation. Uh, also, of course, as he says, reference has experience with ACAS as well. All right, we'll take your views on that. Doing it all again in two weeks' time. And then the drivers come in. There really is hell on the rail at the moment, isn't it? Also hell elsewhere to Afghanistan. Up to 1,000 people lost, 1,500 injured. Samantha Mortis with UNICEF. One of the districts, Galan, I've just heard, has lost 1,800 homes. And these are very simple homes made of mud bricks that crumble really, really easily. It's the aftermath of the earthquake. And news here that's spread around the world.
The return of polio in the UK. CNN. This is CNN Breaking News. Traces of the polio virus were detected in London's sewage system, prompting a warning from British authorities today. Well, that's going to get the American tourists flocking here through July and August, isn't it? Hey, where are we going to go, Hank? Well, let's go to London, England. See the Queen and get polio. 7.16 LBC News headline, Simon Conway. For the second time this week, only around one in five trains are running as RMT members stage another strike. The Taliban in Afghanistan has appealed for international help after an earthquake killed at least a thousand people. A man has been charged with murder of a woman in North London in 1974. LBC weather, fine and dry at first for most, but showers and thunderstorms later, a high of 27 degrees. LBC Travel, I'm Joanne, where because of the ongoing strike, there's a very limited service across all train networks. Most branch lines aren't running and services will be finishing much earlier today than usual. No strike on the underground, but as a result of the industrial action by Network Rail, there's no service on the district line between Turnham Green and Richmond and between Parsons Green and Wimbledon. And Bakerloo line trains aren't running between Queen's Park and Harrow and Wealdstone. On the roads, it is very busy again this morning. Looks like lots of people are using in their cars instead of public transport. It's very slow to the Blackwall Tunnel northbound already from the sun in the sands. And there's a long queue on the A13 as well, westbound all the way from Beckton to Canning Town. This is LBC. Starting route to summer holiday. Continue straight after Are We There Yet? Exit for Ooh, BP, Who's Hungry? Continue towards tempting treats, seriously tasty sandwiches, and a much needed latte. And then next left, break into that snacks. Merge left for the toilet break Jack said he didn't need. Whatever this summer brings, pick up amazing quality, great value food and drink from your nearest BP store. You have arrived. At BP, we're proud to be part of life's journey. BP, every day brighter. Call Nick Ferrari now. 0345 6060 973 LBC. Our pledge is to put more money in the public's pocket. What about my household bills? Yeah. Feeling that in a quarter of a mile, at Junction 3, take the A312 exit to Harrow, Hayes. EU roaming included, and no annual price rises, all for just £5 a month. The Barra, more for less. Exit at Junction 3. Rated excellent on Trustpilot. Buy now at labara.co.uk. Terms apply. Got a parcel to send? Do it the easy way with Royal Mail. In a quarter of a mile, at Cranford Parkway Interchange, take the fourth exit onto the Parkway, A312. Don't worry if you can't print your label. Your helpful postie can bring that for you. They'd love to stay in chat too, but, you know, parcels don't collect themselves. Click, save, we collect. Visit send.royalmail.com. Savings based on online parcel prices compared to over-the-counter prices. Exclusions apply. Life is about sharing those magical moments, and food shouldn't be any different. For over 35 years, Marouche has been perfecting this experience with their delicious food, warm hospitality, and live entertainment. Authentic Lebanese cuisine made the traditional way. Marouche, your family restaurant. Book now at marouche.com. The Sky Connect Summer Sale is now on. Get Advantage Pro at our lowest monthly price this year. Just $24.95. That's super fast business broadband with 4G internet backup for an ultra-reliable connection that won't let you down. At a price that won't go up thanks to no in-contract price rises. Exit the roundabout onto the parkway. Continue on the parkway for one mile.
what I just referenced, of course, the deal that's been done at Mersey Rail. Uh, same subject, this is uh, uh, the front page of the LBC website. Ministers to stop rail union leaders holding country to ransom with strike breaker law. The Daily Mirror is looking at the rail strike, but in a different way. They've got, well, they've got the, the boss of the rail, the, the, the British rail, uh, the network rail, I'm sorry. They also then get the boss of other companies that are threatening or have, royal action, uh, have industrial action, Royal Mail. British Airways and they liken the salaries of all of the bosses there uh, to the workers and talk about get the pay down, try telling this lot, these are as the bosses walk away with in some instances pay packets nudging, well nudging a million pounds in one instance by the way, it's 3.5 million pounds, that's the boss of BT. That's not a bad deal if you can get it, is it? The Guardian says talks to end rail dispute breakdown in acrimony. We're hoping to be able to speak with Nick Lynch later uh, on that subject. I think the others take us away from strikes and have got this right. To polio, which is a very troubling story. Now we're going to be doing that uh, later, but indeed in a few minutes' time. The Daily Mail: Polio is back in the UK after 40 years. Virtually the same language for the eye. Polio found in Britain for the first time in 40 years. The Metro nationwide polio alert. So if you thought, if you thought that we'd managed to get rid of it, so in a quarter of a mile of Wagoners Roundabout, take the second exit and stay on the Parkway A312. Did you have a relative who suffered with it? Have I gone raving mad? Well, I have anyway, but as a school child, did I once have a sugar drop, a sugar, sugar drop, I'm so sorry, a sugar cube with a drop of something on it? Did, did that make sure, or is that like some mad bloody dream? that? Because I, I do have these dreams. <laughs> it's the medication nerves. I seem to think somebody once gave me a sugar cube, with, and don't worry, you won't get polio now. But I also got that injection in my arm that leaves all those little stabbing holes. I think they've gone as well, haven't they? Oh, the good old days. <laughs> we used to take those. Uh, front page of the Sun. Get me to the judge on time. What's this all about? Exit the roundabout onto the Parkway. AKA Jordan. Continue on A312 for one and a half miles. Two days as she faces sentencing tomorrow. It is thought the reality star 44 could face jail. I see why that is there now. Uh, and the front page of the Daily Express and the Financial Times are as one. That's quite a rarity, I suppose. Uh, this is Sunak, as in Rishi, defending the 10% pension rise uh, and the boost to pensions. So they both have that story. I'll pick up on your reactions to the rail strike. I appreciate many of you are fighting to get in. And, and sorry, somebody said, hey, where's it? this is from Steve. London are their own entity. Why are you droning on about rail strikes? It's, it's not London, my friend. This is nationwide, literally. I, I'm tired of telling you how many times, if you want to get out of Newcastle and you want to get to London, or you want to get a train out of, Manche out of Manchester anyway, anywhere, if you're not on the move by five o'clock tonight, that's five o'clock tonight, five o'clock this afternoon, that's it. So this is very much a nationwide, and we will uh, take your calls on that in just a moment. But let's pick up on a story you've already heard on the LBC News Bulletin, which is a powerful earthquake killing at least a thousand people and injuring around 1500 this is in eastern afghanistan uh, of course you can understand we, we don't as yet have more precise figures we do have the fact though that the taliban is appealing for international help for the rescue effort as very troubling video video footage emerges of landslides and ruined mud built homes in this particular province well i think we've got a line into Kabul. becky roby is advocacy manager at the norwegian refugee council in Kabul joins me now. What's the latest you can tell us? Becky, good morning. Good morning. So, uh, so the latest um, from Kabul is that this earthquake looks to be um, the worst earthquake that Afghanistan has experienced 